Hello and welcome to this first video of a series of 10 involving the product configurator and the product configuration models in Dynamics 365 for operations. My name is Jens Christensen. I am the program manager for Western Computer. And what I like to do in this series is provide you a full overview and understanding on how you can set up the product configurator and where it can be applied in Dynamics 365. In this first video here, we'll give you an overview of the product configurator and tell you a little bit about where it can be applied and also give you some insights on the initial parameters that needs to be set up. The product configuration models are created to represent a generic product structure. So that means that you can have one model associated to an item that can have several different IDs underneath or variants or configurations underneath so that will reduce the number of your items in your database. The product configuration feature itself includes a user interface. It gives you a visual overview of the product configuration model structure and also has a declarative constraint syntax that doesn't have to be compiled. That means that companies who want to support this configuration practice can get started much easy. There's several places where the configurator can be applied and some of the areas in Dynamic 365 is through sales orders, sales quotations, purchase orders, production orders, and also in the project module when item requirements are defined. Additionally, there's also the possibility to introduce the product configurator and use of the models in a company where intercompany has been applied meaning that you can have a sales order in one company and a production in another company and the generation of the configuration can be shared across those companies. So the product configurator model is, as I said in the beginning, is a generic model and the structure it helps you to build dynamic bill of materials and routes and also define the sales prices. So we'll start off by creating a sales order here with a product configurator associated to the item, a model associated to the item, and go on from there and give you some of the parameters. So I will open up a sales order that I've prepared here and create a new sales order. So I'm going to go in and click add line and I'm going to, if you look at the drop down here, it's the first thing I'd like to show you is that you have the possibility in the settings to set up to segregate the constraint based items into its own list or to have it just included in all items. So if that is activated, the constant based items or the configurable items will now be listed in its own list. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one here. And as soon as I s save this line, what this will do is give me the opportunity to go in here and configure the line. So this is the first view that you will see. So in here you have some different areas that can give you some information. You have some sales price functionality, you have some requirements or some ship dates that can be calculated. And you also have the possibility to associate the sales price breakdown and also even load a template if you have a predefined configuration that you would like to apply. This feature here is involving these selections that we can do underneath in the fields. These are based on the product configuration model and the setup of the rules engine will provide you some rules on how you can define the different selections throughout the configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some and just provide some configuration here. Now notice here that as soon as I selected the cabinet finish to be rosewood, the front grill was predefined to be white. And that has something to do with the expressions or the rules engine that are set inside of the product configuration model. The other thing I'd like to show you is that this feature here only show feasible. Right now this is set to no and you can see all of the different selections even though only one of them applies. However, if I turn this on and did the drop down again, I will only be able to see the one that applies. So very smart new feature that have been added to the Dynamics 365 for operation as opposed to some of the older versions. I'm going to go ahead and click OK here and what you'll see now is that we have a new item here and what you can see underneath the product here you see we have a configuration you also have information on whether a bomb has been generated or a route has been generated so for this item here both a bomb and a route has been generated because of the setup 
it's not mandatory to have a bomb or it's not mandatory to have a route. This can show you the end result of how to apply the product configurator. So what I'll do now is I'll give you some of the parameters and show you the, some of the parameters set up for this type of the product configurator model feature here. Everything goes underneath the product information management here and what we have are in our product information management parameters where I'll show you information about the constraint-based product configuration models. Some of the information you have here is that you can do the item lookup method. That was what I was showing on the sales sort order of line. If you had a default, you will not have the ability to segregate the different uh, models, but you would just have all the items involved in one list. The price model, whether it's being attached or not, can be associated here. That means that the price breakdown can be attached as an attachment to the sales order line. And the attachment is defined here underneath the document type and the configuration document type. The default configuration ID is the configuration ID that the item will be generated with as soon as the sales order line is created or saved before you do the configuration. Now, as you saw before, there was a yellow line giving a small information that the configuration ID that I was supposed to set will be replaced with a number sequence. The configuration ID needs to be unique, and that's why it's generated every single time that a new configuration has been done. And the configuration ID field is a mandatory field on the sales order line or on the item. So it has to have some kind of a value to get started with. That's why we have a default value set here. The default currency is based on the price settings on the sales prices. And I will show that it's a validation point when the sales rules or the price rules for this model kicks in. And then use catch for configuration is a setting that can help you if you have a lot of configurations that can help you speed up the performance of the configuration as it will cache every selection you do. So these drop downs if you have drop downs with a lot of different values can be much more simplified. So these are some of the preliminary settings that is. Now I'll go back here to our product information management and I'll show you that the next area that we'll touch base on is the product configuration model. This is this piece here. That will be the next video that I will be showing. So stick around for the next one where we'll go into a much more detail of how to build a product configurator model. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day. Thank you.